Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Biomedical Engineering Information Session. We have a short video for you, and after the video is over, we're happy to answer questions for you through the question and answer um, function. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the video, um, and then feel free to ask us questions. <music> I think that the um, advantage of having a biomedical engineering undergraduate degree is that it is number one distinct from other engineering majors. It addresses a societal need for having students that have strong engineering fundamentals that are necessary for the field, but then an ability to understand how those principles apply in mechanical settings, electrical settings, chemical settings that might be part of a biomedical problem. And so their experiences are applicable to a variety of problems that industry would be interested in. I think what they can expect is very dedicated faculty, hands-on experiences, a range of problems that they might encounter later in life in their jobs they're going to be exposed to here. We have a new curriculum which has permitted us to look at other curricula around the country, uh, take advantage of what we have specialized here at Virginia Tech, but then also where we see might be you know, not as prevalent in other programs across the country. There's a lot of unique elements in our curriculum in order to really develop leaders in biomedical engineering. A lot of the elements and skill sets are developed during the curriculum by looking at the FDA and looking at medical devices themselves and breaking them down and understanding the design of them and how to build new innovative approaches. Uh, students who are interested in pursuing a career path in any type of healthcare industry, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's designing, all these types of processes they'll be exposed to during their time here at Virginia Tech. In our biomedical class on the second day, they set us down with a medical device and said, take it apart and tell me what it does. And that was exciting because you've been told, hey, don't take that apart, or hey, put that back together, please. But for once, I'm in a major that allows me to take things apart and not get in trouble for it. And I've absolutely enjoyed that. I'm really excited to watch the program grow with the new medical school here at Virginia Tech, as well as the initiatives in a global community and global learning. These aspects we can build into our curriculum and really give unique opportunities to students that they can't get anywhere else. So my name is Amanda Sandridge and I'm the undergraduate academic advisor for the department. And like I said, we're happy to answer any questions that you have for us. Um, I have others from the department joining me here um, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, real quick, we're gonna, the rest of us are going to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Dr. Sarah Rina. I'm a collegiate associate professor in the biomedical engineering mechanics department. Um, I teach the introduction to BME course, uh, which is the first um, course within uh, the BME curriculum, um, as well as I teach upper level electives in biomechanics of human movement. Um, let's see, we'll have Leah go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Leah Thomas. I'm a junior in BME. Um, I really love this major. I have some experience working in the assistive robotics lab through the mechanical engineering department. So that's kind of where my interests lie. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about research, um, BME in general, just anything. Um, I can introduce myself. I'm Clara. I'm a junior in biomedical engineering also. Um, I saw a question about minors, so I guess I'll say I'm a German minor, which I really enjoy. Um, I'm personally interested in looking at like sports biomechanics, and I'm currently in a design class that's working on a knee brace, which is really cool and fun. Hey guys, I'm Meredith. I'm a junior biomedical engineering student, and um, I got into the program freshman year. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer, and I'm currently trying to answer your questions in the question and answer. 
So I'm going to answer um, one of the first questions. It says how many people are in the department. So there seem to be um, quite a few questions about that. Um, so our degree was newly approved in the fall of 2018. Um, and since it's a new degree option here at Virginia Tech in the College of Engineering, um, we slowly accepted students into the program. And the students you see here with us um, are part of the very first year of students that were accepted into the program. And that very first year, we accepted 40 students. Um, the second year, we accepted 60 students, and in the spring semester, we'll be accepting 80 students into the program. Oh, another question that I see um, is uh, when you declare um, a major in biomedical engineering. Um, so in the College of Engineering, all students enter um, their degree granting programs at the end of their freshman year. Um, so when you finish your first year coursework, you're able to declare um, into a degree grading program. Um, and so that gives you the opportunity to go ahead um, and declare into the programs. And that's when you're able to, to do so. And Amanda, a similar question that came in was, um, uh, not, uh, sorry if I missed this, how many students are in the major versus um, Okay. So our, our in our very first, um, our current juniors, we have 40 um, and our current sophomores, we have 60. Um, and those are our first, um, our only cohorts currently. Um, what are the common minors for biomedical engineers? Um, so, so far, um, the common minors it, are kind of all over the place. Um, we don't have like a commonality um, amongst our students. It really is dependent on what, on what students are interested in. Um, we have some students that are doing things with public health. Um, also students that are doing things with things like psychology and sociology. Um, and then there's other students that are doing things like with biology or chemistry. It's very dependent upon what students are interested in as to what um, they are wanting to um, major in. Uh, kind of similarly related to that, what kind of jobs are available to people with uh, BME degrees? Um, so it's also, that's a, a very hard one to answer because we envision about 50% of our students going into industry and about 50% of our students going um, to a graduate program of some sort. Um, and so um, when students are going into grad school, they're gonna be specializing in the areas that they're interested in. But when they go into out into the career field, um, they're going to be going in things like um, biomedical devices. They're gonna go into things like um, research, um, sales, uh, different areas like that, dependent upon what they may wanna do. Um, it's going to be various depending on what they uh, are interested in. Um, the best thing to do when you're looking at jobs is to actually look at, like do a simple Google search and look at the jobs available for students with a biomedical engineering degree. Um, that will give you a good idea of what's out there and what's available for students with a biomedical engineering degree. And you'll see that they're all over the, all over the place, um, depending upon what you may be interested in. And I think there's a great question here for our students to answer. Um, what made you choose to be a part of the BME program at Virginia Tech? Um, yeah, I can answer that. I think BME is a really cool program because it really, it's like the intersection between healthcare and engineering. So you get the design aspects of engineering and that teamwork, um, creativity that I love, but you're also working directly in healthcare and have the ability to impact people's lives. And that's really what motivates me, just like knowing that what the work that I'm doing um, will be helping other people. Let's see here. And actually, uh, we will... I'll continue with Leah. There is a question about, can you elaborate um, a little bit on what student life is like as a biomedical engineering student? Yeah, um, student life is fun. <laughs> um, I really enjoy the major because it's smaller. So it's given a lot of opportunities to get to know each other as well as the faculty. Um, there, there are a lot of opportunities for research as well. Um, and like for my example, I'm kind of working in the mechanical engineering department. So you don't have to stick with BME specifically, if you'd like to like work with other departments too. Um, there's a lot of room for that, as well as interdisciplinary work. That's something that I've been really interested in. And um, yeah, I don't know, does that answer the question? Hopefully. Yeah. 
Um, so I see yeah. a question. It says, um, how many people applied to the VME program last year? We had mm -hmm. about 125 students apply for the 60 available spaces in the department. Um, so um, that's the answer to that question. Um, it's very hard to answer the question, how competitive is the BME program for because the very first year our program um, was open to students when, for example, when the students that are with us here today, um, when they were uh, um, applied to the program, the program didn't exist when they began as freshmen. Um, so they didn't know biomedical engineering was gonna be available to them when they started at, at Virginia Tech. Um, so it's very, it, they did. They had no idea that this was going to be a degree option available available to them. Um, and then the second year, um, which was this past year, this past spring, when students applied, um, Corona actually really impacted our application process um, and really m messed things up. Um, so it's really hard to answer um, how competitive it is um, because of that. Um, it, it, so I don't have a very good answer for that, and I wish I did. And one of our other questions that's gotten a few uh, likes is, uh, are you able to minor in BME or is it only a major? Um, yes, you can minor in BME. Um, the minor is 18 credit hours and it involves um, the intro to BME course, a medical physiology course, um, two uh, BME elective courses, and then six credit hours of undergraduate research or a senior design project um, that has a BME focus. If you're a transfer student, do you have to wait a semester or do you declare immediately? Um, so everybody that applies to the College of Engineering comes in as a general engineering major um, when they apply to Virginia Tech. Um, and it's the same for transfer students. Um, transfer students have to complete at least 12 credit hours at Virginia Tech with an A through F grade um, and complete that first year coursework before they can apply to a degree granting major. What are some of the internship opportunities for BME? Um, so there are a wide variety of internships available. Um, we get um, internships uh, all the time from many different companies. And a lot of those internships um, are coming from small scale companies, large scale companies. And when we get those um, offers from those companies, what we do is we send it out over our undergraduate listserv. Um, the students can chime in and say how often um, they get emails from me with those opportunities, probably more than they'd like, um, but they um, get a lot of opportunities via e um, email. Um, we also get a lot of opportunities for research at other institutions um, that are over the summer that would allow the students to go to other institutions and do research, um, and so that gives them the opportunity to, get to also look at things besides just doing internship, but also research, especially if they're inter interested in going to a graduate program elsewhere. And I'll add a little bit to that. We also have um, someone who is on staff who's, um, whose job is related to uh, external and alumni relations. So building relationships with companies, um, both small and large companies to have dedicated co-ops and internships uh, and so forth for our students. So that is another avenue that uh, is in development. Let's see. Um, what type of coursework do you do in high school? Or did you do in high school? This is for the students, sorry. I was actually just answering that in text, but okay. I can just say over the um, video. So for me personally, I think it's actually most helpful if you're able to get as strong of a foundation in like calculus and physics as possible, just because those are two courses that just take time to really develop. Like I personally only took physics in high school my freshman year. So it just took me a little bit more work to kind of catch up. But I will also say that there's no amount of coursework in high school that I don't think is like over, you're, you're not able to overcome once you get to college. It just sometimes takes more work once you get here. I think also it's pretty valuable in high school to just take a little bit of time kind of understanding what your interests are and what you may be interested in exploring once you get to college, because that can kind of help you set things up for the long run. But also I think that you don't need to put a ton of pressure on yourself to really try to get ahead right now. Yeah, kind of echoing what she just said. I definitely agree with you, everything she said. Um, um, also, physics is like a huge part of this program. Like it's kind of mechanics based. So if you do have a strong foundation in physics, that will help you. Again, you don't have to like put pressure on yourself if you haven't taken AP physics or IB or whatever. Um, 
you can catch up in college, but I think getting that earlier on might be helpful. Let me see. Um, kind of a related question. Did y'all um, talk about any recommendations of classes that you think were helpful for freshman year and beyond in your BME? Students? Like from high school or in? From it? high school, I think it said, from yes, high in high school. I just think definitely if you have like an, a more advanced physics option to take it. Um, I personally did have an advanced physics option and I didn't take it because I did not plan on being an engineer. And I definitely had to catch up my freshman year for that. And if you do have like calculus options, anything that you can take to kind of get credit for classes going in and not have to take Calc 1 or Calc 2 would be helpful. Um, but again, I, I do like to like note with everything that you shouldn't feel stressed if you don't have those things because it's really not the end of the world. Yeah, also going off of that, like I didn't take AP Bio in high school either. So honestly, I didn't have like as strong of a bio foundation. But I think the fact that I took AP Physics instead actually came in favor for me. Um, so I don't know if Clara took AP Bio or not, but um, yeah. Yeah, I took IB Bio and that definitely helped. And I also say that I had a pretty solid foundation in chemistry, which I thought helped a lot, especially in my bio learning just because I think a lot of those concepts do help build intuition. But I really just do what interests you and, and it'll work out, I promise. What kind of internship or research opportunities are there for our students? So we highly encourage undergraduate research in our department. Um, I'll let some of the students uh, speak to their undergraduate research um, opportunities that they've gotten involved in. Um, but we also highly encourage um, Internship opportunities. Um, we get internship opportunities quite often from um, different companies, both small scale companies and large scale co scale companies. Um, we get those directly by email a lot of times. We get companies who come to campus and recruit students. Um, and so those opportunities are primarily advertised to, to, to the students through our undergraduate listserv. Um, but I'll let the students speak to their research experience so far. I know, I think Leah has some undergrad research um, experience herself. Yeah, so I've been working in the assistive robotics lab and we're creating a device to help patients with cerebral palsy eat by themselves. So it'll kind of like stabilize their motions that they can use different utensils. Um, it's been a really cool project. I love working there, yeah. And it's nice because you don't specifically have to work in the BME department if you don't want to. Like, I'm in the mechanical engineering, so you could kind of choose different routes if that's what interests you. Um, one of the questions was uh, unique study abroad opportunities for BME students. Um, we have a really large study abroad program for the university in general, but um, we also have a faculty member, uh, Dr. Andre Moliner, who's actually uh, recently retired from the Virginia Tech uh, Carilion School of Medicine is now a professor of practice in our department who heads up um, a summer abroad trip to Malawi, uh, looking at pediatric care in Malawi, um, which also entails a uh, part of a spring course. Is that correct, Amanda, or, is, or are those separate? Um, Everything's yeah, over the summer. Yeah, Sometimes it's over the summer. Abroad. Yeah, it's over the summer, it's primarily. Mm -hmm. There's also a question about um, prosthetics and have we had anyone working in this field? Um, uh, so we don't have anyone specifically in prosthetics, but we have a lot who kind of do collaborations on prosthetics. Um, so for example, there is um, the project I think Leo said that she was working on, but it's more considered an exoskeleton than a prosthetic. Um, so exoskeletons are uh, devices that uh, are integrated into somebody that kind of assists them to do a movement as opposed to completely replacing the limb or so forth. Let's see, our next question is about um, programs um, in cancer research. So that's actually one of the other large areas that our department covers. We have several um, researchers who are involved in various aspects of cancer research and cancer therapy research. Um, of which we already have a lot of students in our first cohort who are participating in research with those professors. Um, we also have um, some courses specifically designed um, around cancer um, that we um, are in, in designing currently that will be uh, added to the curriculum. Um, so that's kind of exciting because we have that those faculty that have those areas of expertise expertise that will be offering those courses um, and they will be added to the curriculum shortly. 
let's see, I guess our other question is, um, what are the average range of starting salaries for BME students? Um, it's a little bit difficult to answer because of, um, especially geolocation is a big factor in starting salaries. So for example, if you are out in a, for a startup or working with someone out in California, your starting salary will naturally be much higher because of location. Um, but I would say that biomedical engineering, when you compare to other engineering, um, we are either at that average or above. Uh, a, a good thing to do is do a Google search um, and look at uh, the different jobs that are available with a four-year degree, um, especially um, because historically a master's degree has been required for a lot of jobs um, for biomedical engineering, but recently in the last um, five to 10 years, you can get a job with a biomedical engineering degree. So a good thing to do is look, um, do a, a, a Google search and look at the different jobs um, and look at the salary range. That'll give you a good idea of the different companies, um, the small scale, large scale, um, and the salaries of those companies. And I think that also goes along with our next question, what companies recruit for BME students? Um, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of small um, startup companies that are into device development. Um, and there's actually a few within the Blacksburg uh, area that uh, do that, as well as the large companies like Johnson & Johnson, Nike, um, WL Gore, um, and, so, and things like that. So I see this question um, about will there be a counselor to guide me on what to do after college as far as career. Um, Virginia Tech has a, an entire career services um, on campus that do all kinds of things like help with resumes, um, help with um, helping you with interviews um, and uh, applying to jobs and all those different things. So it's an entire field um, office that's dedicated to helping you with that career search. Um, so it's it's a great office and a great uh, opportunity that not enough students take advantage of. Um, and it's definitely something that you can take advantage of and utilize while you're here. Um, it's also available after you graduate, too. Um, so it's it's something even 15, 20 years after you graduate that you can still utilize. I see another question is about what kind of classes do you take? What's the curriculum like? Um, unlike a, a lot of other um, biomedical engineering programs, um, our program is not a pre-med based program. Um, it's a mechanics based program. Um, so we require the fundamental um, engineering courses, um, statics, deforms, dynamics, fluid, fluid mechanics. Um, and in the junior and senior year, students take um, biomedical engineering um, courses, as well as other technical elective courses that let them specialize in the different areas that they're interested in, in order to be able to kind of tailor the degree towards areas that they're interested in. For our students, um, what do you want to do with your degree once you graduate? Um, okay, so I'm interested in actually looking into public health as a grad school option. So it's taking a little bit of a different spin, but I think it will be cool to combine my background in engineering and then to go into public health. Yeah, I'll add on to that, that I'm actually, I'm looking into going to industry and I'm really interested in jobs that is more on the mechanics side. And I'm using a lot of my experience in different things in uh, undergrad to kind of help inform that decision. But I'll also say my intern, uh, my, inter my roommate is also a biomedical engineer and she's looking to go to law school. So there's a lot of options that you can have with this major. Um, another question that came in is, are there co-op opportunities with Korean Medical Center? Um, and I think Amanda can talk about one that we kind of have with Lewis Gale. Um, it wasn't specifically a co-op opportunity that we had, but we did have a course that was um, an internship summer opportunity um, that students were able to do over the summer. Um, we're in the process of developing co-op and um, internship opportunities. We actually have somebody specifically um, in our department that does um, external relations um, and internships. Um, and she is working hard on developing those internship and co-op opportunities for our students. Um, so not directly um, with the Corella in Medical Center. Um, we do have some um, 
from Carillion, Carillion that reach out to us um, specifically looking for somebody that may want to work for 10 to 20 hours a week, um, but that's not a full co-op experience. Um, so that's the, the big difference. <clears throat> there is also um, an innovations group uh, at Curly Medical Center, which is in charge of finding needs of clinicians um, at uh, Curly Medical Center. And currently one of our professors of practice who recently retired from Carillion, um is involved in that group. And we're working towards having um, our students kind of directly involved in that, in that program. Um, what is the difference between biomedical engineering and biological systems? So biomedical engineering is more of the human approach um, to engineering and biological systems is more the cell, cell and molecular approach. Um, they do a lot of water and soil conservation, um, a lot more biology, um, and we're much more of a mechanics human aspect. Um, biological systems is not going to give you the human aspect. Um, and it's not as heavily mechanics based as what our program is. Um, I don't know if one of the students would like to speak as to whether they were looking at biological systems versus BME. Um, I don't know if, if anybody was, um, but that's the major dis differences. Um, and also uh, biological systems has a lot of uh, an agricultural um, side to it as well. I think Amanda's point about the biomechanics or the mechanics side of our major is a really valuable one because I'm not exactly sure about Leah, but I know for a fact that um, Meredith and I both probably would have gone mechanical if we didn't have the biomedical option. And um, I think that's because of that, like designing for devices and mechanics that we were interested in rather than the biology necessary side. Yeah, that was the same thing for me. And kind of going off of that, like the first two years of the program is very focused on like the physics. So I think it was mentioned earlier, but we take like dynamics and statics. Um, so you get a strong foundation in physics more so than a lot of exposure to biology, if that makes sense. And I guess I will also take this opportunity to say that there is also um Availability outside of mechanics, if that is your interest in BME. So, for example, we have a very large um, base in cancer engineering, so cancer treatment, um, identifying mechanisms of uh, cancerous growth and so forth, as well as device development um, and other areas of, of tissue engineering. Yeah, we're actually all in a cell engineering lab this semester where we're learning the basics of all of that, too. So that's kind of integrated into the curriculum as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, we hope you learned something um, and free to feel free to reach out with me to me for any questions. Um, but enjoy your afternoon. Bye. Bye.